Hello and welcome to a DSP video that considers several Z-transform examples. In this video we're working with the bilateral Z-transform, which is defined as this infinite summation. It takes a sequence x of n and translates it into an algebraic expression for x of z and an associated region of convergence where this um, summation converges. So the two examples we're going to do in this video are for the signals x1 of n and x2 of n defined down here. So here's the first example we're going to do. We're going to take the z transform of x1 of n, this sequence 2 to the n plus 1 u of n plus 1. I've sketched this sequence here. It starts at minus 1, n equal minus 1, due to the unit step u of n plus 1 that starts at minus 1 and goes to the right. And this sequence is going up, um, increasing, right? It's 1 here, and then 2, and then 4, etc. right? Um, so that's the quick sketch of the sequence, and now we're just going to write the definition of the transform and compute it. So x of z, remember, is the sum, the infinite sum, n equal minus infinity to plus infinity. It's really x1 of z. x1 of n z to the minus n. So for this sequence, right, since this sequence starts with non-zero values at minus 1, we can change the limits of summation. We'll be from n equal minus 1 to infinity of um, 2 to the n plus 1 um, times z to the minus n. So we probably want to do some rearranging here, um, and we'll actually take the sum n equal well, um, let's pull something out. Let's pull a factor of 2 out front. So we'll pull 2 out front, and we'll be left with the sum n equal minus 1 to infinity of um, 2z inverse to the n. Let me just make it clear that this is an infinity. Okay, um, so if we multiply back through, we just get the same thing here, right? So, okay, so we've got this, and now we're just going to implement that sum. So this is a geometric series. It's an infinite sum of a geometric series. So we've got the 2 out front, and then we know it will be 2z inverse to the minus 1. That's the first thing in the sequence. And then one way to think about writing this out is 2z inverse to the infinity plus 1 over 1 minus 2z inverse. Okay, so what I'm essentially doing here is kind of abusing the notation, but uh, for uh, the partial sum of a geometric series, right, where the partial sum is, it would be to the, to the first index here and then to the last index plus 1. So this goes to the infinity plus 1. Now, for this summation, though, to converge, we want that to go to zero. So where will that go to zero? Well, it goes to zero only if 2z inverse, the absolute value of 2z inverse is less than one, or z is greater than two. So that's what gives us our ROC, and that makes that term uh, go to zero. So it cancels out. So then we're left with um, two times, um, 2 to the minus 1 times z to the minus minus 1, or z, over 1 minus 2z inverse. Well, 2 times its inverse is just 1, so we end up with z over 1 minus 2z inverse. Okay, so that's what we get for this, and we get that z is greater than 2. So our final answer is x1 of z is z over 1 minus 2z inverse, z absolute value of z greater than 2. Okay, so we have our first example done. Okay, now we're going to consider our second example, which is for the sequence x2 of n defined here, and I've sketched it here. The u of minus n minus 2 means that the sequence goes to 0 after um, n equal minus 1, and it's non-zero before n equal uh, minus 1. 
And um, the negative sign here guarantees that it's purely negative and it's decreasing, right? It's decreasing because I have things of the form two to the n plus one. And so at minus two, I get two to the minus one, which is a half, and then I have the minus sign out front. At minus three, it's um, minus two to the um, minus two, which is minus a quarter, and so on. Okay, so we can just plug in to our formula for the z-transform. It'll be the sum x2 of z is equal to uh, the sum n equal minus infinity to minus 2 of minus 2 to the n plus 1 z to the minus n. I can rearrange this a bit. I can pull uh, a minus 2 out front, the sum n equal minus infinity to minus 2, and I'm left with um, 2 z inverse to the n inside of there. Now, this sequence um, is um, this sequence is from minus infinity to minus 2. To use our um, formula, we'd like it to be going off to infinity, uh, to positive infinity. So we need to do a change of variables. So we're going to let m equal minus n, and then we're going to rewrite the summation. So x2 of z, if we rewrite it, make this a little clearer here. m equal minus n is what we're using. So we're going to rewrite x2 of z will be minus 2. Now it'll be the sum m equal infinity to 2 of 2z two inverse um, to the minus m. Now I can reverse the order, right? A summation can be done in, in whatever order I want. Um, so I can just flip that around and I have the minus 2. I'm going to sum m equal 2 to infinity. And I'm going to pull a minus 1 inside the brackets here. And so uh, what I'll really have is 1 over 2z inverse raised to the m. Now this is in a form uh, of a geometric series that we're more used to. Um, and so we can apply the formulas that we've used before. So this will be minus 2, and then it'll be 1 over 2z inverse raised to the 2 minus 1 over 2z inverse raised to the infinity plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2z inverse. Um, okay. Now this term will go to 0 so long as 1 over 2z inverse, the absolute value of 1 over 2z inverse, is less than 1. Or z is less than 2, Re rearranging that. So that's the ROC that we're going to get. And in that case, this term goes to 0, and we're just left with what we have here, which will be minus 2 um, times... Um, Okay, so we've got to um, rearrange some stuff here. So we've got minus 2 times z squared over 4 over 1 minus 1 over 2z inverse. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by z inverse, right? So z inverse over z inverse, and um, top and bottom by a half. Well, let's let's deal with that separately. So if I multiply top and bottom, first of all, we can cancel this. I'm going to end up on top. I'm going to end up with z over 2 minus z over 2. And I'm going to end up with um, z inverse minus 1 half. And I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2. And then I'm going to end up with, um, uh, let's multiply by minus 2. Uh, I'm going to end up with just z on top, and then I'll end up with um, 1 minus 2z inverse. Um, and that's, I moved, you know, effectively this minus sign is going to reorder this. So I've got the same algebraic expression I had before. Uh, let me write this a little more clearly. My z's are looking a little too much like 2's. 
So I'll end up with um, z over 1 minus 2z inverse and z less than 2. So I get the same exact expression that I had for x1 of z, same exact algebraic expression that I had for x1 of z, but now I get the different ROC. Um, so, um, so I have a different ROC, but the same expression. Okay, so these were the two algebraic expressions that I derived for the previous examples for x1 of z and x2 of z, and notice that they're equal, right, equal to each other. The only difference was the ROC. Um, the ROC for x2 of z was z less than 2. The ROC for x1 of z was z greater than 2. It had to be strictly less than infinity um, due to the fact, um, due to where the poles and zeros are. And so let's um, think a little bit more carefully about that. So where are the poles and zeros, right? To see the poles and zeros, um, we would multiply top and bottom here by z. We'll get it in a form that's easier to see the poles and zeros. So we get z squared over z minus 2. Um, so with that, we have um, two zeros at z equals 0. So a double 0 at z equals 0, and one pole at z equal 2. Um, and so that's where our finite pole is. Our finite pole is at z equal 2. So 2 is here. And then we have a double 0 here, which we can show by... Um, Two circles together or just making a note that it's a double zero um, and all right so that's what we have um, so and the finite poles at z equal two now the other thing we notice is we have to have um, the same number of um, poles and zeros so there is a pole at infinity um, due to the fact that when we plug in right as um, as z gets really large in this expression, right, I have something going as z squared up here and something going as just order z at the bottom. So it will blow up as z goes to infinity. So we have a pole at infinity as well. So we have two finite zeros at z equals 0, one finite pole at z equal 2, and then one pole at infinity. We always have an equal number of poles and zeros. And then what we can say is that um, we have... Uh, we would have ROCs, pretend that looks like a good circle. Um, we have one ROC um, for this signal. So this ROC, ROC1. The ROC1 is all the stuff out here, bounded by the pole at 2. And ROC2 is all the stuff in here. So that's all the stuff in here. Now note, you can have zeros in the ROC. Zeros can be in the region of convergence, poles cannot. So poles bound the region of convergence, zeros can be wherever they want to be. All right, so that was um, a, a detailed example that gave us the same algebraic expression for two different sequences, but they had different regions of convergence. And then the final thing I want to note here is we could have used our table to obtain these transforms as well, because we note that x1 of n is defined this way, right? Um, so we could have used our pair 2 to the n u of n, which we know translates to 1 over 1 minus 2 z inverse as its transform, with z greater than 2. Well, this is just a shifted version of this sequence, right? And in this case, I've shifted it to the left by 1, so n0 is... Um, n0 is negative, right? In this case, n0 is negative 1. Um, and so we would have z to the 1 times x of z, right? Which is exactly what we got here if we compare these two expressions. And then um, we also um, uh, got, um, in this expression, we no longer include infinity, right? Because, because shifting it to the left basically added a pole in infinity. So that changes the ROC uh, of this expression when we shift back and forth.
Okay, so that uh, is two examples that hopefully illustrate a lot of different properties of the forward Z transform and how to check your work using uh, elements of the transform table and properties.